Evening folks, how are we getting on? And I uh, hope the day finds you well. I uh, hope everything's going well for you and it's sunny and bright and nice and everything wherever you are. Um, still in the States here and we are doing something um, really quite, quite, it's quite different tonight. We were, this, I bought it a little while back, um, been drinking away at it um, and I find it really, really quite tasty. Just as a just as a, a, a precret, um, foreshadowing it's called. Let me know. And it's this stuff, Burns Night. Okay, um, and this is from the the ASW Distillery in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's celebrate you know celebrate uh, Burns Night, Robbie Burns, uh, and so on and so forth. And it's forty six percent, and the ASW uh, with our Americana. I assume it's a Scots Gaelic word for American. I don't. I don't speak Gaelic, so I do forgive me for that. A uh, series of American single malt whiskies. We explore the whiskies frontiers, uh, deriving inspiration from those pioneering spirits who have spent their lives forging into uncharted land. We combine the ancient Scottish method of double copper pot distillation with finishes in various American white oak casks, then offer clarity into the composition of each release to provide you the opportunity to taste the immense flavour differences that slight changes in method and material often make. Very good. You like this kind of thing. Each January, the life and poetry of Scotland's national poet Robert Burns are celebrated with readings, traditional fare, and of course, whisky. The annual gathering is known as Burns Night, and we could think of no finer name for this dram, which sees us combine the ancient Scottish method of double co copper distillation with the southern innovation of grains in distillation. We distill Burns Night from a grains in mash of the following below with the faints from our heavily peated single malt tire fire. Now, this is quite an innovative thing. This is quite nice. I like this. As far as we know, this has never been done before on any continent. Now they go on to tell you what the mash bill is. Um, and the mash bill's two row malt, 57%, Munich malt, 25%, cherry smoked malt, 15%, chocolate malt, 3%. Uh, we matured this release of uh, Amer Ganach, uh, Burns Night, in a new 53 gallon American white oak barrel for a minimum of 36 months, which is quite a long time for American whiskey. So yeah, so for a minimum of three years. Oh, and a four char white oak. Now, pour a little drop of this stuff out. So we will. Yeah, we thought a bit more than that. Not a huge amount of this left. Right, so what they're they say on this, what they're telling you on this, is they, they keep the greens in. Uh, to, 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 to run off. Basically that in the mash tun that adds as a sort of filter bed that where the wort's running out, so the beer running out. They, you have to wash that through. Now what these guys are doing is they use the faints from the previous um, mash of their heavily peated tire fire. So they're making a peated whiskey and when they distill it You've got the heads, the hearts, and the faints. So the heavily phenolic, heavy peated, heavy um, the, the phenol, uh, you know, the TCP notes and all that, that normally get taken away and either put back in in the next distillation so they can take out the little bit of alcohol that's left and move it across. What they're doing is they run that through to, to, to pull out and then distill. And that's where the peat is coming in in this. Now that's quite... A, as far as I know, I don't know anyone else that does this. There might be. I may have heard it, but I don't think so, um, before. And this is quite an, a, a nice innovation. Because there are some people who, when they, they talk about pita whiskies, and what they do is they buy an excellent Freud, XR big, X Kalila cask, and basically mature in it, and that's where they pull the PE notes out of it. They get the PE notes from the cask. I have I've never been a huge fan of this. To me it always tastes a little like the difference between 
uh, fruit cordial and pure fruit juice. Um, you know, your your freshly squeezed orange juice and your diluted orange juice. They're similar, but they're not the same. So this is a different way of doing it. And if I'm honest, I think this works re really quite well. Um, it's adding in something that's actually peated in in the traditional manner, a residue of that in through. Now this is not heavily peated when you pick it up on the nose. There's not a huge amount of peat there, but it's there, and it's 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 playing its part. Um, again, it's got chocolate malt in it, uh, the cherry smoked malt, which so it's got smoked malt in it. It's not peated, but it's smoked, so it's got a lot of stuff going on here. And if I'm honest, the nose is really quite interesting because it's it's rich, it's it's honeyed. A little bit of smoke and it's a very nice smoke it sort of works its way through and it, it's, it's almost like um, a blown out scented candle-esque smoke and I'm not talking about the, you know, the, the ones that are a bit OTT I'm talking about a very sort of subtle um, it's like a butterscotch scented candle that's been blown out and the smoke has come through and it really is quite pleasant um, as I say, it's quite up with honey. There's a little bit of that cherryness to it as well that seems to come through, and a bit of chocolate. This is the big category to watch in the future as American single malts, as more and more of them appear, and they innovate and change things and go in different ways and, and so on. Because the, there are so many distilleries now making this stuff that it's, it's really quite interesting. So... I could smell that for quite a period of time, actually. I've been chugging away in this, right? Like, so I have. Um, I'm wearing it down. <laughs> um, so we'll bottle kill this tonight. Uh, and in case you're wondering, you know, normally if you get the less than a quarter of the bottle drank, get rid of it ASAP. Had a couple of drinks out of this last night and a couple of the night before. So <clears throat> this is not high. Has not been hanging around for for that long. Now, initially when you put this in, this, this punches, it punches really, really well. It's fruity, it's smoky, it's, it's fresh fruit and smoke and loads of stuff going on. It's, if you go to the tasting notes, it says peaches, and I agree 100%, there's peaches all the way through. Nice, lovely, fresh bit and then peaches. But it's like eating peaches when you're sitting at a bonfire. It's that kind of thing. And this is really, really, really nice. On the finish, more fruit, more fruit, chocolate, um, light chocolate, really sort of not very cocoa chocolate. And then the smoke comes in. And the smoke actually comes in. I used to smoke years ago. Um, I, I was a heavy smoker. And I, at the time, I kind of thought I enjoyed it, but I didn't really. Uh, once, I, once I figured out that I didn't enjoy it, I stopped it fairly quick. But it's got that cigarette-y smokiness to it. The enjoyable bit, that fresh smoky. As it goes on, it kind of dissipates a little bit into a little bit of stale smoke. But it's it's this is a really, really good whiskey. I can't remember what I paid for this, but it wasn't expensive. And I have to say, if you get a chance of buying a bottle of this, um, give it a whirl. Now I'll just kill this bottle right now. Um, as I say, this this distillery, the ASW in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, this is this is really good, and it wasn't expensive. It was I, th I think something like fifty dollars. It wasn't much more than that. Um, and, and I'm really impressed with it. Uh, The nose, the nose is funny, it's deceptive, because you don't think it's that smoky, that peaty, and yet, once it goes out of your mouth, that's, it's kind of like a celebration, because there's loads of stuff happening, it's, and nowhere, let me just check, I'll have to just check this again. 
Uh, no, they don't. I don't think they use the word smooth anywhere on this. But they do say we never chill filter, we never add colour to any of our whiskies. Distilled, matured, and bottled at the ASW Distillery in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, there's a hell of a lot to like about this. The labelling, the labelling's not great, if I'm honest. Maybe some of you guys can pronounce that better than me. Um, the labelling's probably the one thing that I would, I would say could maybe do a little bit of revision because I don't think it's. It doesn't jump off the shelf the way it should do. But I'll, I'll tell you this now. For whiskies in and around this price range, there's nothing wrong with that. If, if a distillery in Scotland had brought this out, a distillery in Scotland had brought that out, you'd be paying a lot more for it. Um, and people would, people would be clap, 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 well done. And, and I mean that. Uh, there ain't nothing wrong with this at all. The this this technique of using actually something from the distillation process back into the distillation process before the distillation to pull through the peat and the use of cherry smoked malt, which has given it a different level of peat, a different, a different level of peat, a different level of smokiness that adds to the peat, and it just do, 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 and it pops all over the place, and it's it's all the better for it. The fact they're using different malts, they're, they're actually uh, taking concern and care of what grain they're using, uh, is to be commended, absolutely. Hmm. This is really good, fresh, fruity, smoky. Sweet smoke. Honestly, if you sat down at a, it's actually quite desserty now on the finish. Sort of a little bit of sort of liquid syrupy raspberries, which is quite nice, you know, like ice cream topping, but quite mild enough to do that and work. I'm 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 a big fan of this. I think this is really good, really good. Um. I have thoroughly enjoyed going through this bottle long after Burns Night. Uh, I bought it, bought it about a, a week before Burns Night and have been drinking away at it. And uh, more part of your wee wheel. If you're making stuff that's good, I would be quite happy to, if someone reached me a bottle of anything that you're going to make. And I really would like to try the tire fire. And I'll have to have a, a search and a, a, a spy round, see if I can find it at some point. 